Hello everybody, I will not introduce myself again, I was twice introduced. Uh, 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 at first I would like you to, uh, to invite, to ask the questions during my speech, anytime you would need any, any clarification and you just have an answer, they have a uh, question uh, on, on what my speech will be. Uh, I've made a, 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 a kind of legal alert what specific changes to Ukrainian legislation uh, with the actual event of war uh, that came through. But before, just a couple words to have an understanding. Uh, as uh, uh, Shimon have uh, very correctly noted, according to Ukrainian legislation, and by the fact we have a war since 2014, what the difference is on what happened on February uh, 24, it was we recognize and what Ukrainian leg legislation recognizes as a stage of full-scale invasion. There are two main differences uh, from uh, Russian Federation side and from Ukrainian reality. All events happening in 2014 and later were never accepted by Russia as the consequence of their actions. So uh, the special operation of Russian forces in Crimea, in a true fact, have begun a couple days before, before 27 or 26 of February. Now we know probably the most exact date. Most probably it started 24th of February, just become known 26, was again declared as no operation. It was declared that this is initiative of Crimea itself. The same was till February this year declared with the, um, for the um, uh, territories in Donbas, so-called Lugansk and Donetsk People's Republic. In February this year, Russia have recognized officially those two quasi-republics and have announced a special military operation, which in the true fact is an uh, open war uh, against Ukraine. Uh, since we have a situation that we have a war uh, till, uh, uh, from 2014, um, a different legislation changes have come into life during that period. But the most important change have been introduced in February, this year on 24th by Mr. President, Mr. Zelensky. This is introducing a martial law uh, in Ukraine. What is a martial law according to Ukrainian legislation? It's, uh, it's close in, in meaning and regulations to a generally ex uh, accepted in the civilized countries. But it's a special regime introduced in the whole territory like it did take place uh, or in certain areas in the event of armed aggression or threat of attack or threat of the state independence, its territorial integrity, and is granting to the relevant state authorities uh, like parliament, president, government, military commanders, military administration and local self-government bodies the powers necessary to prevent the threat, repulse the armed aggression, and ensure national security. The question is, if we are already eight years on the war, why this didn't took place in 2014? Uh, the difference is that 2014, uh, the, those events were partly a consequence of the revolution of Maidan, so-called Maidan, we took place just before those events. And there was, since our former, formal president on that time, Mr. Yanukovych, have simply fled the country, there was a certain vacuum uh, in the governmental uh, in management area, uh, which was quite difficult to regulate with. And on that time, state functionaries, they took a decision to not introduce the martial uh, uh, law in Ukraine to avoid the situation that this would be used 
uh, uh, and declared as usurpation of the power which would lead to further attacks on further territories of Ukraine. This time we have a uh, uh, legally functioning president, legally functioning government, legally functioning uh, parliament, and the huge difference to the previous time, this time we had a direct attack on the, uh, potentially on the capital of Ukraine, where all governmental bodies uh, are functioning uh, or were functioning on that time. Yes, please. It's, yeah, is Chechnya um, self-governed or is it... Self-governed, it's a local, local state bodies. Yeah, it's, uh, we have a system where we have um, state administration and self-governance, uh, which means a local, uh, locally elected administrations. Uh, we will come a bit later to the change of administration, but no, not, not yet, no, not, not yet. Uh, in a true fact, what are the means of such a uh, implementation of such a regime is one of this is changing the civil administration to the um, military administration. In a true fact, by implementing this, this doesn't mean that all the person at the places were changed. They were uh, mostly remaining the same persons, not already from now on from the 140 days, but at the beginning, just getting a higher powers with the more possibilities of limitations and were supported by the military advisors, formerly Ukrainian military advisors. Uh, with the respect of uh, giving more powers, more possibilities to the state uh, and local bodies to implement the main task of protecting uh, Ukrainian territory and independence, a certain, a certain limitations for the uh, human and legal entities' uh, rights and uh, freedoms can be implemented. This is nothing as special uh, in the Ukrainian legislation. Unfortunately, it is so from the time of Rome that sometime to, to save democracy, you need to limit it, especially when you have uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a fighting counterparty directed by the decision of one person. By the fact, what, what we are talking about is limiting at the first place, an availability of the residents, which means the state bodies are receiving a special rights on checking and revising any property of any kind without the court decision at the territories and not only where the actual uh, military actions are taken. Secrecy of correspondence and telephone conversation. This is clear that especially on our age of uh, electronic communication, this is a very important area where uh, different diversion groups inside Ukraine uh, can uh, organize a different uh, possible actions, but it's also a communication of the counterparty forces of invader, which can be tracked. In a true fact, a, a small, not, not, not a legal acknowledgement, we have a clear understanding that in Ukraine, inside, we have a lot of diversion groups and spies implemented through the years by Russia. The fact is that on the first days and weeks, Ukrainian people and Ukrainian armed forces and Ukrainian government have organized and have provided a very strong defense action have led to the fact that Russian invasion was changed in a plan and only a small part of these groups have showed up themselves and they were arrested or destroyed. But we have a clear understanding that those groups are still uh, in Ukraine and they can show their actions any time. Non-interference in private life and family, 
this of course is uh, at the first place just a simple case that anytime anywhere not only in public you should have an ID confirmation uh, in Ukraine because your personality can be checked uh, anytime freedom of movement free choice of place of residence and the right of freely leave the territory of Ukraine this is the limitation not only by the fact of the territories where the military actions uh, have taken place but also on the whole territory of Ukraine since uh, the general mobilization was announced by Mr. President. The mobilization reserve, and this is most of the men between 18 and 60, are limited with the possibility to leave uh, Ukrainian territory. There are certain uh, exclusions from that uh, regulation, thanks to which you, you can have me in front of you now. Uh, uh, because I'm a citizen in Ukraine. There are certain exclusions uh, for the, of course, for the special purposes like intelligence, military, uh, other connected, but there are also some general civil exclusions like in my example, for example, it's three kids un or more under 18 years. In that case, men are uh, allowed to leave the territory of Ukraine. Some specific additional temporary rules are also allowing a man in this age to leave, for example, a confirmed uh, study in the uh, university or college abroad where uh, the process of education should continue and so on, but they are not in a true fact uh, long. This list is not long, so most of men have no possibility to leave the territory of Ukraine. Right now, it's a, f a bit further implementation where it says the change of the residence in Ukraine should also be conducted only by the permission of the military administration. Right to freedom of thought and speech for free expression of views and convictions. So it's a uh, freedom of word, so known. Yeah? Uh, why this is a very important in our case, a right to have a possibility to restrict or limit, it's because the big part uh, of the Russia uh, invasion uh, activity is a propaganda, which means a lot of forces during last years and actively now are directed to uh, provide contra-information uh, and to brainwash by all possible means, TVs, electronic channels, social media, and so on. Although, as we know, inside the Russia, uh, social medias like Facebook or Twitter or Instagram are, are not possible anymore. They effectively use these channels to wash brain the Ukrainian citizens and not only. Yes, please. Not only in Poland, in U.S. too. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's, it's happening everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's happening everywhere. It's happening everywhere. And uh, there are, uh, if, you, if you go on any article in Poland that talks about the war, uh, anything, and you see you know, the comment section, and you see a lot of comments which are obviously directed into bringing a wedge between the Poles and Ukrainians. For example, if there is an article saying Poland has just sent 250 tanks to the Ukrainian army, you're gonna hear somebody saying, you know, we're suckers, we're giving away our own defense and giving it out for free. Um, but for every comment like this, you'll see five next comments, you know, you're Russian troll and you know, you shouldn't be and so on. So. It is happening, and we know it's happening. Um, uh, we know, for example, you know, it's not this, this, it's misinformation and also, you know, hacking a lot of our important aspects of sort of life. So, for example, one day most of our trains were delayed because the computer system of our railway system was, 
was, um, was sabotaged. Officially, the Polish government, in order probably also not to destabilize the situation, hasn't really acknowledged that this was done by the Russian, you know, any Russian hackers. Uh, I think yesterday the Polish police computer systems were, uh, there was an attack on them, which I think was, uh, uh, was somehow, um, was somehow, uh, I think it, it wasn't serious at the end. But um, we, in our chapter between Poland and, 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 and Ukraine, we also have a difficult part of our history. Uh, and Russians, Russians, Russian propaganda is trying to use this. As I told you, part of Ukrainian territory was Polish territory until the end of Second World War. So, for example, what Russia is saying is, you know, you'll see Poland will want to claim back their own territory at some point. They're only helping you in order to, for the Polish troops to march into Ukraine at some point into Lviv and so on. It's happening. So, uh, it's, it's, it's happening from, you know, little things as a Instagram post somewhere, which just gets a lot of comments, to uh, often, I'm sure there are certain journalists and, and, and influential people that are influenced, you know, also by the fact that, um, by the Russians. So, yes, it's happening. But, of course, also, uh not only social medias and, and uh, TV and other medias. If we are talking limitations in the um, uh, freedom of word, we are talking about limitations in political life. According to the new laws on Ukraine grounded on the martial law, uh, 14, uh, already 14 political parties, small and big, were suspended. The, act the activity was suspended and they, or they were forbidden, including the Communist Party of Ukraine, which formerly the case had started in 2014, but only now it was finished under the uh, claim of the Ministry of Justice. So it's much wider area than just... Yeah, so we have, we have sent, in, as Poland, a lot of the Russian diplomats home. We have asked Russia to, I think, for, I don't remember, 45 to 60 people from the Russian embassy to leave. Uh, some people were arrested as Russian spies fairly recently. recently um, well, after February 24th and also before that. So, so yes, it's, uh, it's, it's very real. I think you had a question. Yeah, and you might have said it, but with the, the limitation of men coming into the country, is that because of the process and we need all yes. hands on deck? Yeah, it's... it's, 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 it's no, it's, it's mobilization, having just, you know, enough men ready to join the army. And I think you it doesn't mean me It doesn't mean all those men immediately join the army forces or join the um, uh, civil works needed for that. If you go to the next slide, you will see what are the means of uh, military administration to use this resource. But these limitations avoid the situation when in the true fact, will it happen by fact Oh no, it's difficult to say, uh, but uh, having this regulation, at least the management of the country is sure it will not happen. And I, I think you told me at some point that there is like four levels of these mo uh, mobilization. So yes. level four, which you said will hopefully never come into place, is essentially general anybody, including uh, women anybody and children, and are fight. called up to you know pick up a gun and go fight. Uh, right now it's level two, right? Correct. Yeah, Correct. so it's... So it's not... Uh... But this system also allows to systematize to, you know, a lot of people we have, in a true fact, in Ukraine right now, we have not less inner refugees than we have an outside refugees. So it means a lot of people have, by the fact, changed their residence, not registering it properly. So it's also a, a, a big job to take care of it that they are properly registered including in the military uh, registrars. I think uh, I've uh, read an interview with somebody who is, uh, I don't remember, the Polish or Ukrainian railway uh, operator, the, 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 the rail, and they were saying that what they're worried about and their big challenge is that if anything is, if the fighting will gonna shift from the eastern part to anywhere to the west, there is millions of people close to, among other, the Polish borders, 
I mean, ready to cross any time if the situation wor worsens. So there is a huge number of displaced people within the Ukraine. So we have a large number already of, of them in Poland, but there is also a huge number of people who don't live in their houses. They're still within Ukraine. Uh, being back to the limitations, I will just jump to another slide because we are a bit short of time, I think. So what are the means of uh, uh, targeting the main uh, issues of protection of the territory and uh, the independence of Ukraine? So those administrations, they, they have a right to introduce a labor duty to for able-bodied persons, of course, not engage in work in the defense sphere and not book by the enterprises. Booking by enterprises means that some enterprises can book the position of the person which is necessary for executing her direct, or his or her direct obligations uh, in order to perform work of uh, defensive nature as well as to eliminate the consequences of emergencies. Unfortunately, uh, day to day, we have much more destruction in the Ukrainian territory, which is connected with the necessary actions to uh, work with uh, such a co uh, consequences. To use the capacities and labor resources of enterprises for the needs of defense. So they are obtaining a right to change the mode of the activity of any company, doesn't matter of is it a private company or is it a state company? But if in the case the activity of this company should be directed for the defense direction, such a decision can be taken without the support of any court decision. Forcibly alienate private, state or communal ownership property for the state needs. I would not say that this, in a true fact possibility, is a much of use at the moment, but such right exists. For example, at the beginning we had a we had a huge necessity of simply personal cars uh, for our army uh, divisions to, to fight the actual invasions because the army itself was not ready. So some part of it actually was eliminated uh, only from the companies, from legal entities, not from uh, personal. But then we had a huge volunteer movement which was supported by the state of simply bringing from abroad a used cars and transferring it to our soldiers. For this, Ukrainian government for three months have canceled any custom duty in VAT, and Poland have faced a dozen kilometers lines on the border because of course people were bringing the cars not only for the uh, military purposes but most of them were for military purposes so this avoided a necessity to using of this point yes please a a a this this level this we are talking about possibilities so this doesn't mean all this was introduced all over Ukraine and immediately. Unfortunately, what I think my personal uh, opinion is, some of this will come in due a bit later because we have a clear understanding this is a longer fight. So I would say that for the moment only in minor, the state is using this possibility only in minor part and on the specific territories. Uh, it just, for, I, I brought this for you to have an understanding what are the changes also in legal field. I'm sure you have an access, and I'm not concentrating here, you have an access in media to see what's in the true fact happening in Ukraine. Uh, uh, but plus to that, I want you to have an idea how life changed for professionals and for simple people in the legal regulations, because this is the field we daily work with. Uh, uh, to establish a special regime of the entry and exit restrict freedom of movement of citizens, foreigners, and stateless persons. This, in a true fact, we have gone through with you. Uh, changes are happening in the legal field, not only with respect to the special defense um, purposes, but also in a general legal life. On February 28, 
the Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. This is the body who is in charge of confirming a force majeure for each case, for each entity or person, have announced uh, a letter of evidence following force majeure circumstances that the military aggression of Russian Federation against Ukraine, which led to the imposition of uh, imposing of uh, martial law, uh, is a force majeure reason as a general one. So this means that in case a person has a need of confirmation of force majeure, there is no need of obtaining a confirmation of the event of such. Of course, the second element of a general force majeure has to be kept. So the person needs to prove that the reason of not being able to execute the um, uh, obligation is this force majeure, but there is no need of obtaining a special confirmation uh, that, that it did happen. I will just bring you uh, also some further short update on the daily life changes. What have changed, for example, using also um, this uh, possibilities which were introduced to the state governments. We have um, new rules in the labor relationship, which has a direct imposal on the daily life uh, of the usual citizens. For example, the usual uh, working week was changed, changed to 60 hours instead of former 40. It doesn't mean that from day A, every person in Ukraine should work 60 hours, but if such a need on any kind of enterprise would exist, the 60 days uh, working week, uh, sorry, 60 hours uh, uh, working week would be introduced. Uh, also in those labor regulations, uh, there is a permission for a certain uh, companies to suspend the salary for a certain time in case of not possibility of paying this, but the company's activity is important for the defense purposes. Uh, there are changes connected with force majeure in the labor relations connected that if the company's activity is stopped, it is free of penalty of suspension or not paying the salary uh, uh, itself to employees. But also, other regulations, we and the Ukrainian government understands clearly that uh, not only on the war field, the war, uh, the war goes on, it's also economical war. So Ukrainian government have introduced a certain um, emergency rules in the tax area to support business. For example, all businesses under 10 billion hryvnia, which for the moment is three, I would say, yeah, three, uh, three billion uh, US, would have a right to uh, register on the simple taxation scheme. For your understanding, Ukraine is a general uh, taxation, so-called French scheme, where we have VAT and a profit tax. But on the actual situation, uh, Ukrainian government have uh, introduced a possibility for every company, where the most of companies, are, uh, or a lot of companies are using this regime, a single 2% tax, which would mean 2% sales tax. 2% on sale, and then you don't need to uh, calculate and work with VAT, and, and profit tax is also not calculatable in, uh, on that period. A certain customs benefits were introduced also for the certain periods, uh, not only from Ukrainian legislation, but the actual time uh, we have for one year, but we uh, suppose and we expect it will be continued uh, uh, custom-free uh, trade with the uh, EU, with the uh, UK, and uh, we expect to widen this cooperation with other countries. If, do we have some, a bit more time? No, we're not out. Uh, Genocide and the Ukrainian law. I will not go into the meaning because it's uh, the definition of genocide in Ukrainian legislation is the same as it is in convention with maybe very minor uh, uh, changes. But perhaps worth pointing out that the definition of genocide was created by Rafał Lemkin, who, Correct. as you may have heard and 
know him as a US lawyer, but he was a uh, Polish, Polish um, scholar. He was a student at the Jagiellonian University, who was kicked out for disciplinary reason after the first year of law school, and became a student of University of Lviv, uh, My alma mater. Your alma mater, where actually you were, I think, responsible for handing out scholar, uh, Rafał Lemking scholarship or, yep, or some correct, sort, of, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you can look up Rafał Lem uh, Lemkin on Wikipedia, and it's an interesting connection between Krakow, Lviv, and the US. Uh, there is uh, discussions between the uh, experts right now and in different uh, international and national uh, justice authorities, are we talking about genocide in Ukraine at the moment? But I would like to bring your attention that war crimes and crimes in, in, uh, against humanity uh, is not the case that if there is a line between genocide and um, crime between humanity, this doesn't mean uh, a war, uh, uh, sorry, a crime against humanity, a less uh, unhuman uh, crime. But the case with force majeure, uh, with, sorry, with genocide is that uh, although, uh, although we are now in, this, in the case of discussing, is it already a time that we can raise the issue that the war crimes of Russia in Ukraine are genocide, we have another case which Ukraine, in a true fact, has an international UN court against Russia. This is supported by a lot of countries already. The case is that, in a true fact, Russia have used a genocide claiming, which, which means Russia have claimed that Russia is starting a special military operation, a war as we recognize it in Ukraine, because of the reason that genocide was take, uh, has taken place in Ukraine. I will not go into uh, you know, legal aspects of the case because it's just at the beginning, but I would say, of course, it's for us Ukrainians, if I can use word funny that we can use for that, because having a president of uh, Jewish nationality uh, Russian, former Russian-speaking one, it might happen in home, he still speaks Russian for us. It's, it's funny to understand uh, how, how, uh, how this fact can be put on the table as the reason of actually con uh, conducting a genocide in the true fact uh, in Ukraine right now. Uh, I will jump quickly since we are most probably out of the time and I will leave a time if, any, if anyone would uh, ask the question. Just a short information about uh, uh, actual uh, statistics. This statistic is already unfortunately uh, a bit out, out of date. For today we have 22, almost 22,000 cases registered in Ukraine because every week and every day we are adding hundreds or thousands of them. Uh, so uh, 20,000 war crimes committed in Russian, uh, by Russian Federation forces have been officially registered. S more than 16,000 uh, uh, were uh, registered by the national police, but the rest by state attorneys of Ukraine. For your understanding what it is, most of them almost 12,000, this is violations of laws and customs of war. A uh, big part, 4,000, this is violation of the territorial integrity and availability of Ukraine. And if you would take, have a look on that, collaborative activities. Of course, Ukraine being in the defense process uh, is facing the situation that is still uh, certain persons who have engaged or even had for the years Ukrainian citizenship are supporting or exact military actions or the war actions uh, itself. But if you compare it with the true fact the general war crimes uh, statistics, it is still on a very, very uh, minor, uh, minor case. 
since we are most probably out of the time, you are uh, very welcome to ask the questions if you have any. On the end of my speech, I just want to stress that it seems like we are moving finally the right direction and the world will declare a Russia what it should be named, a terrorist state. As you might know, uh, on 24th of June, U.S. Senate supported the resolution of calling Russia to be declared the sponsor of terrorism. We, as Ukrainians, have a big expectations that this step will have a further uh, actions because, in our opinion, uh, unfortunately, ev if not every day, then every week we are obtaining a confirmation. Uh, uh, I was back yesterday from uh, Lviv, which is a, uh, my native town, which is uh, a, a western part of Ukraine. <clears throat> and this time it was the first time I took my kids with me back home. And uh, then 300 kilometers from my house, a missile shoot in the downtown uh, of the city, killing at least 24 people and much more injured with the serious injuries, with having no understanding how this is connected with the military activity. <coughs> Thank you for attention. Yes, please. Uh, are there actions in Russia by uh, opposition politicians or lawyers um, against their government? Unfortunately, this is nothing, nothing visible happening to that. We, we know there is a certain, unfortunately, small part of the, national, uh, of the Russian society which is strongly against what's happening uh, and some part having at least a clue understanding what's happening. But the voices are so quiet and if they are, they are mostly from abroad, not from the Russian Federation. We understand this is connected with a great fear uh, and with the uh, not willing of endangering themselves, but the voices are, are too weak. And unfortunately, uh, there is also a very dangerous statistics which says that Russian society in general is supporting the war crimes in Ukraine. Because having a media looking what's happening, a normal person should have a clear understanding this is a war crime, this is not just a military activity. And uh, having supporting it in the social media, in our understanding, brings this society as the, as the part of it. I, I think, yes, uh, not, 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 not sure if I may follow up to what you said, is uh, not sure if, if, if this was reported, but the. Ukrainian government has intercepted a lot of for example, communication, for example, phone calls between the soldiers fighting, Russian troops, soldiers fighting in uh, Ukraine with their families in Russia. And it's scary. Uh, there is a soldier saying, you know, we're killing men and women. And his mother or his wife is saying, no, you're so brave. You're, you're doing wonderful things. Uh, you're, they deserve to die. Uh, there was a... Um, young man who called his wife, telling her that a lot of his fellow troop mates have, uh, have raped Ukrainian women. She actually encouraged him to do the same. Um, there was, I think last week, uh, a man called his wife saying that he just cut somebody's throat uh, a civilian, there was a civilian person there who was wounded and he cut his throat and he said, well, what will be my next chance to, uh, to, to slit somebody's throat? And he said, I enjoyed that, I'll do that again. Um, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're, you're probably sort of accustomed to the fact, you know, you, you envision Russian troops from sort of a perspective how a U.S. soldier looks like and behaves, and although often also guys in the U.S. military, they're just young, young guys who also don't know maybe much about life. But a lot of these Russian soldiers are brought from you know, some remote places in Siberia, uh, 
and, and <laughs> some of them are surprised that somebody has a toilet in their house. Uh, it's, it, it's very uh, difficult, I think, for any of us to understand how cruel these people can be. And in a sense, I think a large part why we as the Polish citizens are so much supportive towards the Ukrainians because in a lot of times this is what we ourselves or our ancestors have experienced. For example, in 1945, we were told that we were liberated by the Red Army. In fact, in many situations, those liberators were much crueler than the Nazis that have occupied this country. Um, so, <laughs> yes, you have to keep in mind what you're saying. You know, we, I understand that the Russians are, the Russian society is scared, they're brainwashed by the propaganda, but it seems like, from what we can say, most of them believe this propaganda. Most of them believe this is the right cause. Most of them believe that the Ukrainians are Nazis. They believe that NATO was about to invade Russia. So about over, it's, it's probably true that over 70% of the Russian society supports the war on, in Ukraine. 80 from the last... Or even 80. Uh, uh, yes, sorry. Yes, please. I want to just thank you both for what you're doing. You're brilliant. You're courageous. Reflect what would have happened if we countries generally had started doing this sort of thing in the 30s before the Second uh, War. You can answer the questions that I wanted to ask. What is Ukraine, uh, to some degree, the question? What does Ukraine need to continue to fight? Will Poland stay the fight? Is there going to be uh, broad support for this action as it drags on? And what is the likely, what is the end game and the likely outcome? You're facing off against one of the, the second most powerful military in the world. So that, that's what they're so saying. Cold. So called, so -called second. second. Uh, it's it, for, maybe we hope that actually it's the second strongest army in Ukraine right now. <laughs> uh, answering. Um, it, it's it's. I think you've asked the right question, and this is something that uh, you know we ask ourselves. Obviously, you know you you know about. The same thing has happening in the U.S. Inflation is, is, is really high in Poland. Gas prices, electricity prices. Life is more expensive. And suddenly we're here living with strangers and we need to support them. Yes, I am sure, in a sense, over time, the support will wear out a little bit. And this is my biggest, in a sense, weird and worry. And in a sense, it's very natural. Uh, on the other hand, I, I really haven't heard about anybody you know, asking somebody, sorry, you have to leave because I have no way to support yourself, uh, to support you. Uh, I need to support my family, but it, it is an issue. So, uh, yes, uh, th there needs to be, obviously, money. Uh, there is, you know, uh, uh, funds is, is one thing. Military support uh, to Ukraine, but also to Poland that, in a sense, exposed itself now to a threat because we have sent um, uh, equipment is an important factor, but also I think, uh, you know, always sometimes we were asked uh, uh, what can all of you do uh, to help the situation? Uh, well, stand with Ukraine. Uh, you've heard us talking. Maybe you can also educate some other people. Uh, even putting a little Ukrainian flag on your Instagram account, on your Facebook account, is a little symbol of help and it's being recognized, so uh, you can do that. Um, there are a lot of initiatives and you can go on the internet and find you know, bank accounts of where you can donate money to help you know, humanitarian aid or military aid, whatever you feel like is the right cause, you can do that. So there are ways to send money directly to Ukraine to support uh, you know, Ukrainians. We ourselves as Poles, 
You know, we believe that the Ukrainian society is, in a sense, fighting for us. Um, and if it wasn't for them, uh, it's not out of the question that actually, you know, we would be currently fighting the Russians. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, with that, uh, you know, all of us can make a little difference. So, in, in fact, you know, the fact that we're meeting here on Saturday and talk, talking about these aspects, you know, is, is, is part of the, of the fight against this uh, tyranny. So, uh, so, yeah. We have another question. I'll just finish the, the answer to that one and then we have you. Uh, the case is that, uh, first of all, we want to thank you and we will not get tired as Ukrainian uh, saying thank you to all our allies. But our days, our biggest and stronger ally is US and, uh, and Poland being the most closest and also one of the biggest and probably second after. Of course, UA is, UK is stretching <laughs> to somewhere. We appreciate support of all our allies, but we know where the, uh, the, the most support comes from and we want to say thank you and answering your question is what do we need at the actual moment we need the same as it is just we need it in bigger quantities and we need it now because every day uh, uh, our really brave people are doing uh, in their heroic behavior, impossible things with the lack of equipment and the lack of uh, ammunition. As far or as soon this will change, we will have also a significant change in the actual situation on the war field. Of course, the second important issue is support of Ukrainian economy. Unfortunately, we have a clear understanding and the, answering the second part of your question is what are the prospects? The prospects are most probably not only on the battlefield but also whose economy will drive in a good condition or comparatively good condition long enough to being able to support the battlefield. So it's just a simple question, will Ukraine with the support of the allies, because we will not be able to stand alone, stay longer than the Northern Empire will start to fall apart because of sanctions and, and other reasons. Will it take one, two or three years? It's difficult for me to say, but I still believe in a bright future of my kids in my country. Thank you. Thank you. you had a question. First of all, answering your question, I should say we should make a difference on, on, on having uh, Russian-speaking Ukrainians and r r Russian, uh, s uh, you know, ethnically or uh, uh, connection by citizenship. This is in a true fact, a uh, general myth that we have too many ethnic Russians. No, just a big part of Ukrainians who identify themselves as Ukrainians, they still recognize the, the, one of the native language, Rus Russian language, which is in the true fact being actively changed right now. A lot of people not even knowing it, trying to jump into Ukrainian language. Uh, uh, with the respect to a specific, uh, let us say, connections, which are in a true fact, not only relative connections, but also a lot of Ukrainian families had a broad Ukrainian citizen working not only in uh, Poland, but also in Russia, mainly in big cities, Moscow and St. Petersburg. So, of course, we are not talking about the situation that there is any kind of filtrations or suspicions 
with this kind. National security forces, intelligence forces, they are doing their job in this situation. Of course, we don't have it in the newspapers, but sometimes we have a situation when some actions needed to be taken. Since uh, the case is that uh, a big part of disconnected families uh, have to decide for themselves where they are. It's, it's the personal right which cannot be taken by any martial law. But what the limitation of the martial law for those families means they need to take this decision. And if before they had to take it sooner or later, it's the right time to take it now. Uh, and about the language, uh, I'll just bring you a simple example. Since the, the, the war is, uh, is in, in many forms hybrid, uh, we know that Russian forces quite often are, are, are acting in the Ukrainian uniforms or the uniforms you can't identify. It. So it's quite often used in, uh, uh, mostly used in the uh, UA armed forces that they have a yellow stretch showing um, um, from the Ukrainian forces to not be endangered for, the, for their own brothers on, uh, of the gun, you know. Uh, but when the night comes, you can't see the colors. Even if you have special equipment, you still cannot see the color. Then the language goes into game. If you can say in Ukrainian, Yes, this is the Ukraine. It's very difficult, unless, of course, it's spy, to do it for a usual uh, Russian uh, military uh, member. And very important issue is when we are getting close to what what is the uh, what is the general thing we all can do in this situation is, of course, a support with every single and, and possible mean of the, po of the positioning. Because, unfortunately, the propaganda have not, have not gone away. It's still active and, unfortunately, in some cases, uh, successful. So, we are very glad that we have an opportunity to, to have this couple words with you and we hope you are not bored and uh, thank you for the attention. Yes, please. Not a question, but a comment. Um, even though, you know, the propaganda is at work still in the United States even, but uh, your president, Zelensky, has achieved like a heroic status for a lot of us. Yes. And when he said, uh, I, don't need, uh, I don't need a ride, I need ammunition, he became like a figure that is uh, really heroic and is somebody that we see it. This is how we would like our leadership to look someday. <laughs> It, well, it, it, uh, it, it, he said so because we really need this ammunition, you know. <laughs> somebody <laughs> said, thank you. Somebody said that uh, everybody thought that the Ukrainian people have elected uh, a comic, a comedian, as a president, but it seems like it's a president that is making other presidents and leaders of the world looking like comedians. Some big president in one big country was also was a former actor. Uh, I mean, Mr. Reagan, this is for the younger ones.